Hello and welcome to Strappy's Migration Guide. The goal of this series is to give you all the tools necessary to help you understand migration process when going from Strappy 3 to Strappy 4. So in this introduction video, we're going to cover all the things that you need to know before getting started. And at the end of this video, you should understand the overall migration process, things that you need to consider before even starting, where to find all the help in the documentation and where to find additional help with the resources that we have available for you, as well as Discord. So the agenda for today is to go over the migration process overview to give you a big picture before you try to do it yourself. We're going to talk about things to consider that will help you identify how long the migration process may take for you. We're also going to set expectation of what that may look like depending on your particular case. Every project is different and you need to take that into account. We're also going to talk about how to navigate in our documentation to understand where each step in the documentation fits in the migration process. And then we're going to talk about what's next for this video series. Let's take a big picture overview of what the migration process entails. So I wanna share with you this diagram and show you all the steps that you'll be going through and where to reference documentation based on what steps you're in. There is a lot of steps to consider. So before jumping in and try to migrate your production project, make sure that you watch this video from start to finish, get a bird's eye view of what the process is and to understand where to find the help. And throughout this video series, we're going to do our own mini migration to help you better understand the process. So go through that first in order to better understand what the process entails before going to do it on your production project. So we are going to start the migration with the backend code first. When you're starting your migration process, it's very important to back everything up, which includes also your database. And when you're going through this process, you should never point to your production database. It is not necessary at this step and will save you from a lot of trouble if you accidentally make a mistake. In your V3 project, once you point to a new database, you will start and manually migrating the configurations as shown in the documentation. And we'll take a look where that is found in just a minute. Once all your configurations have been migrated, we will start to use code mods, which is a script that we have, which will allow you to migrate your schema and some of the file structure that is very difficult to do manually. What this will do, it will help you to upgrade your folder structure, your dependencies, plugin folder structure can also be migrated automatically using this tool. Now, the most important part in the migration process, any code customization that you wrote in addition to what the core Strapi application provided, that would still have to be migrated manually. And we'll discuss this in more detail as we go through the following video series. Once you complete the manual process, at this stage, your application should run and you would move on to the next step, which is to migrate your database. And we do have database migration scripts that will help you in the process. The most important part, you can do a lot of this stuff manually, but the migration scripts were created for a reason and it's to help you migrate with least amount of friction as possible. And once you complete the database migration, you will be done with the whole process. So now that we have a general overview of the process, let's take a look one more time at this flowchart and see where we could find the reference in our documentation that can help us with each step. To make sure that you have plenty of resources to help you understand the migration process, I also wrote this blog based on our live stream where we discussed the general overview process that showcases all the steps. I'm going to put this in the link below so you can use it as a reference. Now let's follow the flowchart and take a look where we can find the help that we need inside the documentation. This is an important part to keep as a reference, which will help you on your migration process. So taking a look at the flowchart, we start with the backend code migration. So for square one and two, you could 
could see the following docs in our migration guides. And I want to make sure to link it in the description below so you have all the information. If you click on code migration, you will see all the related migration topics that are involved around backend code migration. Taking a look at the second square, we're going to next move on to our configuration migration step. As you could see here, we will click the configuration and we will see all the items that need to be changed. And I'll show you all the examples of the file structure from V3 and how it's different in V4 and how the names have changed. Once we make all the changes in the configuration, the next step is moving on to using code mods. In this step, we're going to learn about code mods and why you should use it. You can find code mods in our code migration guide. If you scroll down, you will see a link to Strapi code mods. Once you open it, it will take you to the codes mod GitHub and will tell you more about it in terms of how to use it and what it does. You should rely on using code mods because it's going to do a lot of heavy lifting for you. It will change the file structure as also update your schema files for all your content types, which could be very time consuming if doing manually. Code mods will also update your dependencies. Once that's done, you'll be ready to move on to routes, controllers, and services. After running code mods, the next step will be to update your routes, controllers, and services. The most important thing to consider here, any customizations that you did in Strapi V3 would have to be migrated manually, and you could use our documentations for that. So let's take a look where we could find it. So looking here, we have our documentation for routes, controllers, and services, as well as other things that you might have customized. And let's take a look at an example at routes and see what it looks like. As you could see, it will tell you some basic information what changed, and it'll show you some examples of how you would create routes using Strap before. And this also applies to all the other items. So this is a great place for you to reference how things are done and how they're different. So if we take a look at controllers, controllers, we could see similar here where it shows you the changes as well as how to apply those changes with customizations. And we could see the same examples for services. And this is great resource for you to use to see how would you implement those changes. And depending on your code base, this process may take you some time based on how much customizability you had in your previous project. But the good news is you have the documentation and you can also join us on Discord in our V3 to V4 migration channel and and ask for help. After migrating your custom code manually, your application at this point should build and you are going to be ready for the data migration. The best place to start is using the data migration scripts. We could take a look in our documentation, click on data migration guide that will take us to the page that will explain all the different things you could do. Currently, the data migration script is in alpha beta testing, but you can still use it and it's been working for a lot of our clients. You can go to their GitHub page and checking out how to use the scripts correctly. At this point, when you complete the data migration, you will be done with the final step. Now, I know this may sound like it's a process, but we have made a lot of changes from Strapi with 3 to Strapi 4. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below on the talk I did with Aurelian where we talked about the differences and why we had to make the changes that we did. If you didn't know, we actually rewrote a very big part of the Strapi v3 code base, which gave us improved performance and laid the foundation to allow us support all of our future features that we want. It was a hard Hard change for us to make, but we knew that we had to do it now instead of waiting down the road, which means that the later migration steps would be much simpler than this time around. And once Strapi Cloud is released, that will simplify the steps even farther. Now that we have seen the big picture overview of the migration process, let's talk about setting realistic expectation. Please consider the fact that your project can be different from somebody else's. The more customizations that your project had, the more time time it will take. How many content types do you have? How many custom controllers? Or did you use GraphQL? How many custom resolvers you have? That will all add to the time that will take. And in the next series of videos, we're going to show you in 
more detail some of the steps to help you along on your process. So what's next? In the next video, we're going to take a simple Strapi V3 project and use CodeMod to migrate it to Strapi 4. That will give you a good overview of how to use code mods and how you could apply it in your project. Afterwards, we're going to take a look at customizing routes, controllers, and services, as well as GraphQL. And the goal of this series is to give you enough resources and know where to find help to make sure that the migration process goes as smoothly for you as possible. By the way, if you're not on Discord, make sure you go ahead and join our Discord channel. Not only can you get general help with Strapi 4 and help others out, we also have a specific channel for migration steps as well. With that being said, thank you for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.